the introduction to Schaefer's The Mark of a Christian deals with the concept of the mark. So what is the mark? Say love. Now that's the obvious one uh, distinctly. Love is in there, but did you, did you also catch this other piece that's in that, that uh, phrase, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. They'll, by the demonstration of love, they will know that you are my disciples. And as other places, as we'll get into later, Jesus says distinctly in uh, actually John 17, that to, so that the world may know that he, you have sent me, speaking to the Father, he's praying to the Father, that the world may know that you have sent me. The knowledge is an aspect of the gospel, and it's an aspect of truth. So, yes, distinctly, it's love. But it's not unguided love. It's not un, uh, just love for the sake of love. It's love with a, a connection to the truth of who Christ is. And so uh, I think that's significant. Any other thoughts on that? All right. John 13, 33 through 35 depicts Jesus giving a new commandment, which is more explicit to the believer than love thy neighbor as thyself. Why does Jesus give this new commandment? Why do you suppose it's a new commandment? Isn't this an old commandment? Mm -hmm. That's sort of the new part because Christ is now here to reveal himself in the flesh and he's yeah. demonstrated love that other men have demonstrated. Very good. So here again, what Joy's saying is that it's connected with the person of Christ. Love as I have loved you. So that is also connected distinctly with his sacrifice, right? So this next question uh, kind of gets at that. According to John 13, uh, 33 through 35, we are to love one another as Jesus loved us. What does that principally imply? What does it apply, uh, uh, you know, really imply to us if we are to love each other as Jesus loved us? How much does that require of us? <laughs> The concept of humility. Have we ever thought about that? The, I love that you pointed out the incarnation. Because here's the God of all eternity, the maker of the universe, who spoke it into existence, deciding to inflict himself on our behalf. So he comes to the earth and becomes a baby and is born in a cattle stall. All right? how, how much more can you be humbled than that, I mean, it's it, to me, it seems quite apparent that God wants to demonstrate to us the depth of His love by doing things in the most humble possible way, and then the pattern of His life, as you indicated, because really the the core of the, the of God, Christ's message is not just the cross, and it's not just the birth. So it's not just Christmas and Easter, or it's the whole of that demonstration of implying the Word of God. Uh, and his, his, the way he demonstrates himself to others. Um, you know, a perfect example, if you want to look it up uh, and read over the, the passages, on uh, Christ's interaction with people, uh, specifically at whenever Lazarus died. And look at how Jesus uh, handles himself. It tells us in the text, if you go and you look at the Greek, Jesus was livid. He was angry. Yet at the same time, He's self-controlled, and he's compassionate. And there's this wonderful grace that he, he handles himself so wonderfully. Because he, he, he could have just said, don't you people know who I am? I could raise him just by blinking an eye. You know, he could have been very uh, arrogant with him, but he was very patient. 
and very persistent in, in his approach. Jim, did you have something? I just like your word, uh, arrogance. Uh, this is a, a <laughs> lack of arrogance on our behalf, understanding the reality of who God is. Mm-hmm. And understanding the reality of who God is is not a, a removed reality. God is a present reality. Mm-hmm. And the the idea of of love, and as you guys discussed, a self-sacrificial type love, but it is also a self-love, understanding the value of the, your being, because God has given you your being as mm-hmm. well as everybody else's being. Mm-hmm. All are created in the image and likeness of God, even our enemies, yeah. which is a hard thing to grasp. Um, it's hard thing to practice. It's easy to grasp, but it's hard to practice. Exactly. Well, and you know, what, the, what does that embody? By honoring ourselves, we're honoring God if we do it rightly. You know, if we see ourselves properly in that context, then it becomes that subservient role at the same time a glorification role. And I think that's, that's where you see the complete unity uh, be pulled together uh, for realization that, uh, you know, that we are truly walking in, in the Spirit. I think that's a, a key characteristic of knowing uh, where we are. The Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit uh, created us and invested themselves in us. We read in Proverbs 8 mm-hmm. about the, um, uh, the master craftsman. So it's the personification, the change from wisdom to this personification of Christ being the master craftsman there where everything happened by him, for him, through him, mm-hmm. etc. As we're, as we're told in the New Testament as well. And, and, and Christ's delight, or God the Father's delight was in Christ, and Christ, or the master craftsman's delight was with the sons of men. They have invested themselves in us mm-hmm. where it, it is not just a, a head knowledge, it is their, their mind, we love, and we'll go back to the word love, um, so that's not good to describe love with love, but they, 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 they have not left or, or forsaken us, they come, or, or God comes in, the redemption is, is personal, it is complete, it is across time, it overcomes sin, and when, when we are called to love one another in like fashion, it is the giving of ourselves to them um, and doing likewise. And we manifest those kind of things in the mundane of everyday life, mm-hmm. in, in being fathers and mothers, in being brothers and sisters in Christ, and working with non-Christians, uh, working with Christians. Uh, yeah. in, in the laws that are written in the land, there is this manifestation of, of holiness, righteousness, justice, and all those kind of things. So, so love is living, which you use the phrase, you know, it's not just the, the Christmas and the Easter that's important about Christ. Those are important, yes, that's, I'm not denying those. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's, mm-hmm. it's all of life. Yeah, definitely. And that's the example, right? Uh, so there's, there's a lot there that we can really digest. And I hope that we'll, as we begin this class, that we'll begin to mull over how we practice this in a very tangible way. Because in a certain way, it can be thought of in a very abstract manner. But realize, though, that we have to bring it down from the deep theological concept. And beautiful, as beautiful as the theology is, it has to be brought down to the personal level. Otherwise, it's just still abstract or theological concepts that really ha- have no relation to everyday life. If we don't bring it down in here, we're not really being loving with it. You read through Scripture and you, and you read Paul, every time that he mentions the word doctrine, he always prefaces it with something. And it's the word uh, there, and it's, a lot of times it's been translated sound, but it, it, uh, it literally means healthy. What is healthy doctrine? 
And so healthy doctrine is the, not only the hearing, but the doing of it. It's the, the doctrine in action. And so I have one last question. We're out of time. But uh, by the time that John writes in 1 John 3.11, there is an established teaching that has been told from the beginning. What is it? I think we probably picked this up. What's the established teaching that uh, has been established from the beginning? Yeah, the requirement of love, that you love one another. And so, you know, as we, as we embark on this uh, journey, if you will, of studying this in a very uh, granular way, because we're going to get very granular in this class, uh, ask us to really take an inventory each week of where we are with this concept. And I hope that, I mean, I had some wonderful thoughts, and I was really glad we have, have time for discussion, because you guys have some really good input. And I think if we be, as we begin to share this with each other, we'll see that it is deep. Uh, these waters are deep. And so it's easy to dismiss words like love. Because the word like love in our culture can be very meaningless if it's just, you know, an emotional love. But it's a choice to love here. And the concept of truth. Well, what is truth? You remember Pilate's question to Jesus. What is, what is truth? Oh, well truth is actually standing right here in front of you. And so truth uh, is embodied in the person of Christ. And I love that we've stayed very Christocentric here in our discussion. Let's uh, close in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this time. I, th- I just pray, God, that you bless this class as we continue. I pray, Lord, that uh, you'd bless all the technical aspects of stuff uh, that we're trying to do. And I pray, God, that uh, you would just uh, really help us, Lord, to uh, to dive in deep into this core concept that it would be more than just abstract thinking, but Lord, that it would be very granular and that we can apply to everyday life, Lord, and that we can see the blessings uh, and the gifts of your Holy Spirit that are brought about because of truth and love. I thank you and praise you for your glory. pray you bless the, the time of worship for those who are going to worship, and Lord, the rest of the Lord's Day for those who are going home at this time. In Jesus' name, amen.